The Center for Audit Quality presents Profession in Focus. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Profession in Focus. I'm Cindy Fernelli, the Executive Director of the Center for Audit Quality, and it's a great honor to have with me today Admiral David Simpson. Well, thank Admiral you, Simpson, Cynthia. thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Cynthia, and thank you for your leadership with the Center for Audit Quality. Wow, I appreciate mm -hmm. that. You do serve on our cyber advisory panel, mm -hmm. but you've also served our, our country uh, with great honor. You are a retired Rear Admiral of the Navy, mm -hmm. and then after that, you joined the FCC and headed up their uh, cybersecurity efforts and also some homeland security as well, correct? That's right. I was the uh, Director of Public Safety and Homeland Security at the FCC. Uh, charged with really a addressing risk to our nation's telecommunications sector uh, and engaging in the uh, rulemaking and other regulatory activities to reduce risk. Well, that gives you a great platform to talk about cybersecurity here today. So thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. So I want to get started and talk to you about a very broad question. I want to ask you a very broad question because there's been a lot of commentary in the news um, you know, as we're taping this, there's a lot of commentary uh, about a uh, television show that has been hacked and been released. And so it seems like a day doesn't go by that there's not some kind of cyber news. And so as somebody who has been working in cybersecurity for decades, I'm curious as to how alarmed you personally are. Um, you know, I can get myself pretty jazzed up uh, when I think about this. Is it something that keeps you up at night? Well, uh, alarm is relative, uh, and I can tell you I'm very concerned. Uh, do I lose sleep at night over it? Uh, no, but uh, I am very concerned that the threat morphs so regularly that uh, if we're not keeping our eye very focused on the ball, on the challenge, uh, it will bite us in areas that uh, we will very much regret later, uh, whether that be uh, us as individuals, us as companies, or us as a nation. So vigilance is key. Well said, but I'm glad to know that it doesn't keep you up at night. <laughs> I do know that you feel as though this isn't a problem that the government itself can solve, that it's going to take a public-private partnership to address the issue adequately. Where do you think the private sector needs to play more in cybersecurity? Well, first let me step back and talk about cybersecurity from its threat to national security. Because national security is much more than just our armed forces. It's much more than the Department of Homeland Security or even state and local uh, uh, law enforcement. National security is also our economic security. It's the control of our information environment. And so you referenced a television show that, that got hacked. Uh, we also are concerned that in the elections that uh, there was influence that was enabled uh, through cyber means. Uh, so uh, I very much believe that how we approach cyber in the commercial sector has a direct correlation to the security of our nation. Uh, so that's why it's so important, I, I think, for companies in the commercial sector to realize they've got a role in this. But if you subtract out the national security piece, it really can be an extinction event for companies that aren't prepared for cyber attacks. Uh, and they're going to come. If you have a business that is information intensive in any way or any line of your business, uh, you're very much at risk of that being compromised. Threat of your intellectual property, uh, denial of service, uh, or maybe even a complete uh, hijacking of your message uh, to the point where the company is so embarrassed and the, the, the brand is impacted. Uh, so I do think that uh, it has uh, I impacts that uh, all leaders in the commercial sector should appreciate and you can't expect the federal government to somehow be your shield and uh, uh, protect you against all potential harm in this area. You've got to own it. 
Well, having said that, I'm going to ask you what I know is probably a very unfair question, but that is, what is one piece of advice that you would give a company as it's looking at and grappling through the, its own cybersecurity issues? One piece of advice in cyber is really hard. I know, that's why it's unfair. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, it would be organized. Uh, if you go down the road and uh, start addressing uh, cyber in a capricious manner as things pop up, uh, you, you will rue the day. It will be uh, more expensive than you ever thought. Uh, and you will be less effective in addressing cybersecurity than if you took a step back. Uh, and, and I don't, ju don't just mean take a step back at the beginning, but throughout uh, and uh, regularly organize for the effort. Uh, and uh, it's one of the reasons why I'm so excited about the Center of Quality Initiative, because I really think in that organize for cyber, what you're wanting to do is to assess appreciate uh, and then address cyber risk uh, affirmatively. Uh, and uh, most companies already have an excellent workforce that is primed and has been doing that for uh, decades uh, as a profession, uh, and that's your, your auditors. Uh, and it just makes so much sense to me to bring the auditors into a company's ability to uh, assess cyber risk, uh, but then bring that assessment into the uh, C-suite so that that can be appreciated, put in context with your other risk, and then a holistic plan to address those risks uh, can be formulated. And if you do that regularly, uh, uh, that will recognize that the threat isn't static. It will change, that assessment needs to be regularly redone. Uh, but then the appreciation of what the change to the threat is versus what you've already invested in uh, can be done in a consistent manner. So uh, organize. Well, thank you for that. And thank you again, not only for your service on the Center for Auto Quality's advisory panel, but also for your service to our country. So. Admiral Simpson, thank you. Well, thank you, Cynthia. And thank all of you for joining this edition of Profession in Focus.